Hey, it's the Terminian Hero here, and we are playing Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy. The very first Jack and Daxter game. Now, this game is a collectathon, which is a genre that I love. We're gonna be playing it a little differently from a normal collectathon at first, and then we're gonna be switching into collectathon mode later, but I'll explain more of that once we get through the tutorial level. For now, let's just get into the game. I'm using a brand new PS2 memory card for this. I literally just opened a brand new official Sony PS2 memory card. Because I just needed a new one. My other memory card or two have like permanently corrupted data on it because of Jack X. But we'll talk more about that once we get to that game. Hopefully it won't take too long to create a file. It might be taking longer since it's a brand new memory card. It's really taking a while, isn't it? I said I wanted to get into the game. Thank you. <laughs> I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose, and why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old Green Stuff told us not to come here. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Man, that stung! I told you we shouldn't have come! 
down here and you listened. What? Ah! Okay, okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Tarnation, do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you going to keep yapping, or are you going to help me out of this mess? I'm going to keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! And here we are. On the gameplay, we're at the tutorial level, Geyser Rock. You see, we've got four somethings to collect. Fifty other somethings to collect out of 2,000 in the whole game, and seven other somethings to collect out of 112 in the whole game. And we got options, but I mean, whatever. Anyways, so here's our teleport gate. You can't come back through the warp gate until you find all four power cells on this island. So yeah, we've got to collect power cells, apparently. That's what those other four things were. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Yeah, so they're gonna be talking to us, so I'm gonna have to be careful not to talk over them. Which could easily happen in this tutorial area, since they'll be talking to us a lot. So we've got these green things we're collecting, which they'll explain soon. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. Yeah, so these precursor orbs are our money, but there's a limited amount of them in the game, so they're kind of like the gems in Spyro. You're not gonna tell me how to attack yet? Fine, I'll do it myself, then you can tell me. the most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-grab zoomer. Alright, so these power cells are our main collectible, like our power stars or our, you know, our shine sprites or our 
jiggies or whatever. And just a thing about autosaving, that's fine. If we look here, we can see that there's actually names for each mission for the power cells we collect. So that's cool. You know, it'll tell you them after you collect the power cells. And if you're aware of the power cell, then it'll also tell you before you collect it as a bit of a hint. Sometimes you'll want to hit things with a greater force. To break one of these boxes, you should jump in the air and then dive down onto it, hands first. These wooden metal boxes don't look that tough. I'll bet they'll break if you jump dive onto them. Yeah, so in addition to your normal punch and your crash style spin attack, since this is made by the same people who made Crash Bandicoot, uh, you also have some moves like mid-air moves, so if you do a punch while in mid-air... Hey, you found one of my scout flies. I sent seven of them to each area to look for power cells, but the workers must have captured them all. So yeah, we've got seven of these to find in each area to get a power cell. In the tutorial area, they're all right here in the same place, because it's a tutorial area. Just make sure you actually pick them up. Don't leave without them. Wow! That last scout fly had a power cell! I'll bet if you collect all seven in each area, you can find even more power cells. Anyway, so we don't need to destroy all these things. I'm just doing it for the heck of it, I guess. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. So here we're being introduced to Eco, which we kind of were already, but they didn't explain it yet, but... You'll understand what I mean by that in a bit. Anyways, so you can collect this blue eco, and it'll attract these orbs towards you, and it'll break those boxes when we go near it, and it makes us faster, and it does other stuff too. But first I'm gonna go down here and explore, because there's some orbs down here. These blue eco clusters also respawn after you use them, so it's not like the level's gonna run out of blue eco that you need or anything. We can look out at some other areas in the world too, like there's Misty Island where we were in the cutscene, and there's like the mainland over there. As well as a bunch of area over there that we may explore in later Jack and Daxter games, but not this one. I'm surprised the... The tutorial characters didn't say anything when I was swimming out into the water. Maybe there's no line for that, or maybe I needed to do it, like, at the start of the tutorial. Oh, well, whatever. As you can see, we have a roll and a roll jump. Which is pretty much the fastest way to get around. Notice how each blue eco cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. What? Anyways, we've got something interesting looking here that's about to be explained to us. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling Blue Eco through your body. So yeah, we need Blue Eco there, but we're not gonna backtrack because we've got some over here. That's a Blue Eco vent! 
separated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of Blue Eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. Yeah, so this instantly fills us up with our Eco gauge to the max. You can see in the bottom right, we run out of Eco as time goes on. caused the door to open. With Blue Eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have been dormant for years. So, like, if you just look around, there's a bunch of interesting, like, ruins around here made out of this special metal. This, like, precursor metal. Yeah, so we can do a high jump if we crouch first. So, you know, it's a lot like Mario with the with the high jumps and the long jumps. And Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos or one big green one to increase your health. But yeah, and also like Ratchet and Clank with the boost jumps and the stretch jumps. Which is basically the same as Mario's high jumps and long jumps. Anyways, yeah, so that's what this green stuff is. It's green eco. Pick up a big green eco. Or pick up 50 small green eco to get more health. Then jump pick once, then jump again in the air to reach even higher ledges. Pick up uh, one big green eco. That also counts as a health. And a green eco vent. Like with the blue eco vent we saw earlier, that will instantly fully heal you, but those are very rare in this game. So we got all 50 precursor orbs in Geyser Rock. And now we got all four power cells. Find the cell on the path, open the precursor door, climb up the cliff, and free seven scout flies. We need Blue Eco to charge this platform up! And just one last bit of tutorial before we go. I want to go out to the water again to see if they say something. of the island. Come back to the warp gate so I can bring you back to the lab. Hurry up! I mean, that wasn't the dialogue I was looking for, but whatever. Let's just move on. Oh no, which one shall we choose? Well, we only have one place to go, Green Sage's Hut, so I guess this is tutorial level over. training boys but that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead ah then no problem we got the moves eh jack we'd love to stay in chat big green but we're uh itching to get on with our adventures fine fine adventure away then and while you're out adventuring why don't you make yourself useful my darn green eco collectors are clogged up again Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Yeah, so Samus just had us accept a mission, and it's possible to, ex to complete missions without accepting them, but then you miss out on cutscenes. And there's a lot of cutscenes in this game that people probably don't know exist because they take a, um, com a collect a thon style gameplay approach and just complete every area as they get to it. 
which, you know, uh, makes it so they don't accept all these different quests. So I'm gonna start off going through this game in a mission-based way, and then I'm gonna start going in a collect-a-thon style way afterwards. But yeah, so here's one of those piranha plant, you know, Venus flytrap type things, just like the one in Crash. We can talk to Samos again here. Some brave adventurers you two are. Back already and without clearing my block eco-harvesters. They're on the far side of the beach, boys. Now, get moving! So yeah, since the cutscenes and the tutorial level take so long, uh, oh, also, we can go back to Geyser Rock if we wanted to, but we have no reason to. But yeah, since the cutscenes and the tutorial level took so long, uh, this is gonna be it for this video, but in the next video, we'll start up the real game and go, you know, accept some quests and explore some levels. So, I'm the Terminian Hero, and I will see you then.